Firstly, congratulations on wanting to draw. I did art in high school, but I was 50 before I finally got round to starting to paint, and I was 60 before I started to draw. It's never too late to start and to start improving. It has been such a great thing and brought so much to my life. Let me encourage you by saying, if you're wanting to, that's probably every indication you need that it will do the same for you. But that's not my first point. My first point is, be prepared for the fact that not just will there be things that you need to learn about drawing, but that it's quite possible that you will need to start by learning to learn again. By this, I don't mean that learning is going to be this terribly difficult, overwhelming thing for you. But knowing how to learn is a skill, and it's a skill that we've probably taken for granted when we were younger, at school, studying, maybe if we started new jobs where we had a whole lot of things that we didn't know at all. But often through those decades of middle years, there aren't a huge number of very different new things that we need to learn. So we can have less experience of the things that we need to learn in order to learn. The skills and the mental attitude that we use during the learning process. And depending how old we are, learning may have involved books and encyclopedias and making notes and things that really aren't a part of the learning experience in nearly the same way, if at all, nowadays. So there can be means of learning that we haven't actually really engaged with, learned how to use, that we will have to. And as an older person, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that somehow all these young people who seem so able to use anything that plugs in and switches on and lights up and needs typing, it's so easy to think that somehow they're born with this ability. And it's just not true. The advantage they've had, of course, is that they've possibly started to learn these things when they were very young, which is the age we're at when we learn to learn without even thinking about it. I need to keep telling myself, though, that it is just as easy for me to learn how to hotspot, use an iPhone's apps, set up a Wi-Fi network, work out how to post videos on different social media apps, learn how to edit photos of my drawings so that they look really good, connect the correct cables to the correct sockets, as well as how to use the TV remote. The only things really we're born instinctively knowing how to do is how to breathe and how to feed. And that's it. Everyone learns everything else. But if we're older, we may be out of practice with the skill of learning. So let's be prepared for that. That's simply the first skill we're going to improve on as we learn to draw. But know that you can. If I have a mantra in all of my teaching videos, it's we get better at what we practice, which means we should make sure we keep doing the things we want to get better at. So we should pick up good habits, not just in our drawing, but in our learning to draw. But with time and practice, improvement will happen. It will never be harder than at the start. So don't be discouraged. A little bit of perseverance is all we need to get through this possibly difficult early stage. This point leads onto our second point, which is YouTube. Obviously, we know how to use YouTube because we're both here. I always find it helpful to be reminded that whatever we need to find, there is almost certainly a very specific YouTube video on that. And if I'm looking up YouTube videos on how to draw, as it seems like you are, it's good to be reminded that there are also YouTube videos for things that aren't directly connected with how to draw, such as how to set up my printer. What's the best free app to use to edit my videos or my photos? How can I make photos of my drawings look better? How do I get a video off my phone onto my computer? And what if I have an iPhone or an Android phone? Is it any different? There are very specific videos on all of these topics. And if you can't directly do something with what you have at that moment, you can certainly find out, is there a free app I can download for that? and what is the best one. This kind of flows from the first point too, it's learning how to learn. And part of that learning how to learn in relation to YouTube is learning the best question to ask so that we find what we want most quickly, most easily. We actually get what we really want to know and not something that's just a bit roundabout and similar. And again, learning what to ask 
when we Google questions is one of those learning to learn skills that we only get by practicing. And let me encourage you, I know from experience that this is something we get better at as we Google more and more questions, see the results, we learn what are the key words to use. You will improve with practice on this. While I started searching for questions such as how to make your photos look better, I found that the results required me to purchase apps to download to use. I found a better way of doing this was to search for questions such as how to edit photos on iPhone. And that way, all the results were free on my phone. And my third tip is don't rush out and buy a lot of drawing equipment. Even if you're at a stage in life where you do have some resources, a budget for activities such as drawing, because it's just not helpful when we're learning to draw to have too many art materials, even if we got a bargain and got them very cheap. It's just not helpful for the learning process. We improve our drawing skills faster by using fewer materials, but learning to use them better. How a particular brand of pencil or pen feels in our hands. How the ink flows out of whatever type of nib it is into the paper. What sort of marks that it produces and so on. All things which influence how our final artwork will look. And it's not just the drawing tools we use, but also what we draw with them. By limiting ourselves to a certain subject matter, by focusing our attention, efforts and learning on one particular subject niche, we can learn and improve our skills more rapidly. And once we've improved our skills in one area, those higher skills will transfer into other areas and other materials, other subjects. But if we dabble in lots of materials and lots of subjects, we can easily remain at a low skill level in everything we do. So it's helpful to narrow down and focus. And if I don't have a budget for drawing, if buying materials is a challenge, then certainly I should buy the cheapest that I can afford to use up. Because when we start to learn to draw, the materials aren't as important as actually having drawing practice. It's easy to overestimate the benefit that expensive materials will give us at the start. It's far better to have paper and pencil that we can use freely and not worry about wasting them. We will learn so much more that way than buy materials that are so expensive we're afraid to waste them because we're not sure we can afford to replace them. Don't focus on materials, niche down. It will work better for actually learning to draw in the long run. You can always buy expensive materials later down the track. They can be nice to use, but they're not nearly so important when we're starting. For my fourth point, I want to be very practical regarding the actual drawing process. Now, of course, if you really want to draw a certain way with certain art materials, then go for it. It's always your choice. But can I suggest that with all the options of how to create a drawing and what to create them with, my thought is that a really great way to start would be by drawing freehand with pen. And by this I mean we don't use pencil at all. There's no pencil under drawing. We don't use rulers at all and obviously no erasers because we can't erase the pen. We draw directly on our paper with the pen lines that will be in the finished drawing. Does that sound scary? It is, which is why it's great to start here. And of course we'll make mistakes at the start, but it's a bigger mistake to think that at the start of learning to draw, we're going to produce finished artworks. Someone learning the piano would never expect to be ready for a concert by the end of the week. We practice, we learn our skills, and by drawing directly in ink, a confidence and an ability to take risks is forced on us. That's a great thing to develop at the start of our drawing process. Once we get it in our head that our aim is to develop skills for drawing, not to produce artworks, we'll have a lot more fun and end up with a higher drawing skill level than by trying to produce masterpieces from the start. Beginners at drawing can easily spend more time erasing lines that are in the wrong place than drawing lines in the right place. We can become so timid we're afraid to draw any lines. So why not try drawing directly in ink and just develop that confidence as well as that skill at the same time? I think it's really worth giving it a go. It's what I'm doing here in this drawing, directly in ink, freehand on my paper. It's a lot of fun and it's always a risk 
but good things are always risky. So why not start there rather than, as I did, finish up there after a long journey through pencil. Give us some thought and maybe give it a go. And for my fifth point, why not consider embracing social media as part of the drawing journey if you haven't already been involved with it? Because it can be a very positive experience. And if I haven't had much to do with social media up till now, which is more common with older people, then possibly we've only heard or at least only remembered some of the more negative comments about it and it can have a darker side. But there's also great capacity for encouragement and inspiration and connection with other people on the same art drawing journey. Can I suggest that if you're learning to draw that you start an Instagram account just for your drawings. So if you already have one that's more of a general life blog or for a different subject that you start a new one just for drawing. No kittens, no holidays, no coffees, no meals and no grandkids. Because then the algorithm will more easily recognize what this account is about and connect you with other similar accounts. I have been so inspired, taught and encouraged by the artists in other accounts that I have followed on Instagram. And I've had some really enjoyable interactions with them. And I've even been able to connect in person with a few of them here in Australia. And if I'd never done that, if I'd never posted my drawings to my Instagram account, then I'd have never done this because this is all part of the same social media journey and its connection with my drawing. So why not give that a go as well? G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found this not just interesting, but also encouraging. And if you are a bit older in life, then don't ever think that you've left your run too late to start to learn to draw. It's a great skill at any age. So have fun, I'll see you next time, bye.